Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to another Sabbath day. I'd like to give a shout out to my 28,100 plus Facebook followers and also my YouTube subscribers. Greetings and welcome. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas, Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those of the sub-Saharan and of the transatlantic slave trade. My topic today is understanding Genesis, the beginning, part one. Today I will go over Genesis, the beginning. I know it is necessary to understand what happened in the beginning because there is so much confusion concerning this. Many do not believe in the Bible because they are led to believe that the Most High God only made one man and one woman. This is not correct. Before this lesson is over, I aim to answer a few of those questions and clear up confusion associated with Genesis. Number one, did the Most High God create more than one Adam? The answer is yes. Let me explain it as it is written. Let's start at Genesis 1 and 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. Okay, now I want you to slow this down because I want you guys to understand the, 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 the singular, the plural, the masculinity, and the femininity, and all of these in, in, in these uh, sentences. Read it and understand what, what is being said. Because, and God said, let us. Now, who is he referring to? Let us. Dominic, and God said, let us. Who is he talking to beside him? Is he talking to himself? Well, who, well, who is he talking to? Yeah, the host, the heavenly host, everybody up in heaven. Let us make man. All right, he, is he saying men or is he saying man? man. What? Man. Is he saying man or men? Man. man, is that single or plural? Single. Okay, let us make man in our own image. All right, come on. After our likeness. Let him look just like us. And let them have Hold down. Then he now he's gonna change it. Change the perspective to, to just one man, then he said, let them. Alright? Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Now, he gave the rest of the man of the men. Let them. So is that just still talking about that one man or is it talking about other men? Other men. The other men, let them. Let the rest of the men have the have what? Have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea. Dominion. What that mean? They got power over the fish of the sea. So don't every man have a power over the fish of the sea? You can go out fishing today and catch a fish. Don't you got power over that fish? Whether to keep it and kill it and eat it or throw it back? Don't, don't you, dumb nigga, let your yay be yay. Nobody hear a hand, a hand shake. Yes. Okay. So you, they got dominion over the fish of the sea. Come on, and what else? And over the fowl of the air. You can go shoot birds. They out there quail hunting and all kind of shooting. Shooting birds and stuff in the air. Come on. And over the cattle. You got cattle. You kill and eat all the time. We go, go to the grocery store and get beef every, every, uh, every week. Come on. And the cattle, and what else? And over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You got people out there hunting snakes and reptiles, uh, uh, iguanas. Because, you know, like, I'm going to tell you, like in Jamaica, them people eating iguana and all that. In, in the islands, they eat that stuff. Down in Miami, they catch those iguanas and eat them. Creepy things. That's why, you know, that's why I tell my kids, in this truth, when you become in this truth, you can't go over everybody's house and eat. Because the fact is, they're going to eat unlawful things that you can't eat. And so you don't want to be disrespectful by telling them, no, I can't eat that. So, if they're not in this truth, don't eat over their house. 
All right. Man is the singular and men is plural. The most High God said, let us make a single man in our image to look like us. However, even in this precept, you, will see, you see that he included the other men by saying, let them, which implies that there were, was more than one man, but they were not created in the Most High God's image. The other men were not created in the Most High God's image, but he said, let them. The other men that I'm going to create, let them have dominion over the, over the earth, over the, over the birds, the fish, the cattle. Let them have dominion. All right? Let's continue on 127. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Okay, he's talking about singular. He, he created he, him. So he created him in his image. All right? Male and female created he them. He did create male and female. He created them. So he created, these two precepts is telling you that he created more than one man, but he created one in his image. One he called his son, and the other ones are just men that he created in his image that his son would have dominion over. All right, I'm getting too far ahead of my lesson right now because I want y'all to, Simmer down and get the understanding of what, what the Most High God is saying. Because Genesis it has a lot of similitudes and allegories and stuff that people don't really understand what, what Genesis is all about. The Most High God created man, singular, in his image. In his image, the Most High God created him, singular. Male and female, he created them, plural. The males and females were other Adams and Eves. But they were not the son of the Most High God. Genesis 1 and 28. And God blessed them. He blessed every every man. Come on. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. He, didn't tell every, he told all the men to be fruitful. Come on. And replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Is not what every man have dominion. Dominion over the fowls and the birds and, 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 and the cattle? Don't every man have dominion over them? Because every man slaughter cattle to eat them. They got dominion over the fish. They got men in, 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 in uh, fishermen boats that go out fishing all the time. The most high blessed all of the atoms, told them to be fruitful and multiply. All men and women are placed upon the earth to have children. That is your goal, to be upon the earth to have children, to be fruitful and to multiply. All men and women have dominion over the fish, birds, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. The descendants of this Adam represent the sons of God. The descendants of this one Adam represents the sons of God. Because the Most High God created that one man in his image, and that's he considered his son. Number two, was Cain the son of Adam? This is the question. Because I, I'm, a, I'm a slow go at this. Let's first, before this question can be answered, you must understand that Eve spent time with the serpent without Adam. Was the serpent a snake or was it a, 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 a talking snake? Hmm? No. You you say no, right? What would make you think that? Jordan, help him out. This is a spiritual thought. What was the, the serpent with the, with the serpent and the snake? Huh? Now, here's the question. That's the question. But here's another question. What was upon the earth at the time? Now, the, now, the, now the, the most high God, the creator of the heavens and earth, said he created man and all, he, he had created all the animals and everything else on the earth. He, he didn't create any animals to talk. No talking animals. So was the serpent a snake, a talking snake? Yeah. What would you surmise the serpent is? As the devil, okay, it's just a deceiver. 
Okay. Let's let's look let's look at let's let's continue to move on. Genesis three and one. Now the serpent was more sub subtle than the, any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You should not eat of every tree of the garden. Okay, let's let's understand the word, word subtle. Dominic, read that. Making use of clever. What what were you reading about? Subtle. All right. Making use of clever and indirect methods to achieve something. Being subtle is a characteristic of the serpent. The devil made deals with nations today by not including all the facts. No, the devil deals with nations today by not including all the facts. For example, for example they tell you that Christ did away with the laws of the old covenant. This is not true. Only the laws of sacrifice have been dis discontinued through the blood of Christ. Now, but the serpent or the devil or the deceiver would tell you that the laws, that he ain't saying all the laws, he's saying the laws of sacrifice, but he ain't saying the laws of sacrifice. He tell you the laws are done away with. And here y'all go running. Oh, there ain't no laws. There ain't no laws. Murder is a law. You can't murder nobody. Thou should not kill. You did saying he done away with the laws. He did not do away with all of the laws. Only the laws of the sacrifice. That's what the serpent did then, and this is what the serpent doing now. So he's talking to Eve, telling her, "Oh, you know, what did he tell you?" Had God said, he, "Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden." Let's understand what this tree is. Let's 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 deal with 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 the law. John one twenty nine. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and say, "Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world." This is a law of sacrifice because the Lamb of God. This is what you use to sacrifice. The world represents the world of Israel. There was no other nation using a lamb as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of sin. It only represents the nation of Israel. The lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. Because when you logically look at things, no other nation sacrificed lambs to their God for, for, uh, for forgiveness of sin. So it only refers to the Israelites. Let's continue on. Genesis 3 and 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. The first book of the Bible is the most difficult book. It has many similitudes. The fruit is pro produced through the bread, the word of God. Deuter Dominic, read Deuteronomy 8 and 3. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou doest not. Neither did thy father know, fathers know, that he might have been known, that man doth not live by bread alone, only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord, of the Lord doth man live. The tree represents the other Adams who were living under different laws as Gentiles. See, the fact is, the Most High God breathed the breath of life, the, the, his commandments, only into Adam, his, his son, Adam. Now, whatever tree uh, 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 thought that these other Adams were living under, they, they were not for his sons, nor are the daughters of, of that son of Adam. They were not for them. So we need to understand this, this fruit and this, it, what, what this bread produces. The tree represents the other Adams who were living under different laws as Gentiles. Let's get 2 Andrew 6 and 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou mayest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also, whom thou hast chosen. The Adams that was made in the image of the Most High, the Adam that was made in the image of the Most High God was Lord over all of the other Adams. He was the Lord of, of, of this earth. The Most High God created him to have dominion over everybody. It made him a God upon this earth. And the other Adams he had dominion over. 
The Most High God breathed into his sons the law, statutes, and commandments. This is the tree that the serpent was attempting to make the woman forsake. Because just like the Israelites, when they were given rule and stuff, the other nations fooled them, came into them, brought their, brought their gods with them. And the Most High God told us not to bite of that apple of those trees. Not to even let them in the, in the land. We didn't listen. This is the same thing that played out before. But in similitudes was this written. And nobody really understands this. They just think that God made man in his image. And then, and then people go off. If God made man in his image and Cain slew Abel and, 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 and God got rid of him out of the garden, where did he go and find another woman? Not understanding that in the image of God made he him, male and female, created he them. So he had other men and women upon the earth all at the same time. Just like when he made birds, he didn't stop at one bird. And he told them to be fruitful and multiply. Simple stuff. But when your spirit is in, in, this, in this Bible, you understand those things are just simple as day to you. It's simple as going on in, in, into your room and turn on the light switch. That simple. All right, let's continue Genesis 3 and 3. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, Ye shall not eat it, eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. Now, let's get the understanding of the fruit in the midst of the garden. Were there other, uh, were there other Adams and Eves in the garden? Were there other Adams and Eves? Yeah. Other men and women in the garden? Yes. Most like God didn't want us, to, the, the Adam, the son of God, did not, he did not want the son of his, his son to partake of their fruit, of their tree. He didn't want them having children with him. Just like in, our, in, in the covenant that he made with the, us, the same applied to them. He didn't want them mingling with, 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 with their children. He didn't want, want them worshiping their gods. Let us evaluate this. If you partake from the doctrine, which is the tree of the other nations, you are in sin. And the wages of sin is death. Nothing has changed. This was this was logged in. Dominic, read Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You partake in sin, death is your wage. So the most high God was telling Adam the same thing. If you partake in this tree, which is sin, you're going to die. Genesis 3 and 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Oh, you can sin all you want. You ain't going to die. It's like you told the woman, okay, you can do what you want. You ain't going to die. When the Most High wrote in our law that he did not want us making marriages with them, it is because of this. The children of the devil will pluck you away from your tree, and you will be fully partaking in their tree. Dominic, read Deuteronomy 73 and 7 and 4. And, and read loudly, please. Neither shalt thou make marriage with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou give, shalt thou take unto thy son. These trees and fruits represent doctrines of the other of the atoms. The Most High made only one Adam in his image. He did not want Adam or Eve to partake in the fruit of their doctrine. Continue on. Deuteronomy 74. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. If you abide in the fruit off of the other nation's tree, when can you visit the fruit of your tree? You you spending all your time visiting the fruit and biting off the other nation's tree? Just like right now. 
we have no time to partake in our tree simply because the tree of the other nations look too good to us. And this is what we are hovering toward, moving toward. We don't want the fruit of our tree. Our, the fruit of our tree is, is, is too, bothersome, too bothersome for us. We don't want that because there's a lot of things that we got to do in order to keep our fruit fresh and keep it ripe and that the bite would be pleasant. We don't want the fruit. Okay, let's continue Genesis 3 and 5. For God doth know that in the, de in that in the day ye eat thereof, and your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Adam was already a, a god. He was already a lord. So what the hell is the devil telling the woman? This is how the descendants of the devil act today. They tell half truth and lies. The Most High had already let Adam and Eve know what good and evil is. First John 3 and 4. Read that, Dominic. Whosoever to be of sin, transgression, also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. Breaking the law is evil. So, the Most High God had already instilled in Adam and Eve when he breathed into them the breath of life, which is his commandments and his laws, that he they know what sin was. Adam knew evil was going against what the Most High God told him not to do. This is why the Most High does not want the woman to teach. First Timothy two and eleven. It all stemmed from creation. First Timothy two and eleven. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. The Most High. Ordained, he ordained this because because of the woman being deceived by the devil, and, and she's still being deceived by the devil. Because you know what, most women run to Esau for everything, and Esau gives them all of these shiny rocks and everything, and 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 make them wicked. They out there twerking their ass and everything, getting on video, and they getting paid to be on videos twerking, and 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 doing all kind of evil stuff, making them want to sleep with every white man that they see. All right, Timothy 2 and 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Let her be in silence. Not Like I said, this is not a man rule. This is the Most High God's rule. It, now he gonna, the Most High God do not want a, want a woman to teach his word unless they are teaching other women and children, not the church. All right, 1 Timothy 2 and 13. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. The Mosai is telling you why he does not want a woman to teach. She is not a queen. Adam is a prince. So the Hebrew woman is a princess. The Mosai God does not have a wife. If, 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 a, if, if the woman is queen, that means that she is married to God. The Mosai God ain't got no wife. He, he told us Israel means for... Israel means that that uh, prince that has power with the Most High God and with men. So if Israel, the, the uh, Jacob is a prince, how could the woman be a princess over Jacob? Don't make any sense. First Timothy two and fourteen. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The woman. Caused the sin. Now, you 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 put this together with what we're reading in Genesis. Transgression. What is transgression? Sin. Sin. So the woman sinned by partaking in the other fruit or the other doctrines of the other nations. And we're gonna look at this in a minute. We're gonna see it. The woman is easily deceived or beguiled by Satan. She allowed the devil to seduce and con convince her. Let's continue on Genesis 3 and 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant. That it was what? 
and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Oh, wait a minute. It was pleasant to the eyes. So we're talking about something else. Not fruit to eat. It, was, it looked good. Come on. And the tree to be desired. Oh, to be what? To be desired. Okay. To make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And also gave unto her husband with her, and he did eat. The woman partook in the doctrine of the other Adams, so the doctrine was good for bread, spiritual food. Let's get Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. However, this bread of food that Eve conv convinced Adam to partake was pleasant to his eyes, to the eyes. This is why the Most High God had this law written. Let's get 1 John 2 and 15 and 16. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The, the doctrine that Eve desired was present to the eyes. The Most High tells us not to love these worldly things. All right, come on. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh the felt lust, good, come on. And the lust of the eyes. Oh, it was pleasing to the eyes, okay. And the pride of life. Everything that that that, that you lust after and prideful is a combination of both. Lust of the flesh, lust in the in the lust of the eyes is the pride of life. Come on. The love of the Father is not in him. Because th those things that make you feel good, that looks good, and that makes you feel with pride is not of the most high God. Knowing that the serpent of Satan gave Eve a lustful mind. Do you think he had sex with Eve? You didn't think he stopped at that? I don't think he stopped there. Because he was spending some serious mac to her. These are the things that he said to her in order to get to, to, to get at her. These are the things he said to her. You know, I'm going to tell you, if you, you know what? When, when a whoremonger is out there whoremongering, he's a serpent. He's out there telling the woman everything that she want to hear. To get at her. And she may have a good man. He going to knock him off. He, he going to knock her off the, 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 the hut stairs of her having a good man. Because he will never do nothing with me. You know, he pays all the bills and he will never do nothing. He, he take care of the kids and he, he, he's, he's at home with, and he does everything, but oh, he, he, he don't never do nothing with me. And you have some old evil women that, that, that go there. You know, I'm going to look for me another man. Next thing you know, she's sleeping with him. He's a serpent. This is what that serpent did. I, I, my surmise is that this was, a, this was one of the atoms that was, in, that was in the midst of the garden. Because the most High like God did not only have the, 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 that Adam that he made Lord of all all the uh, other Adams, but this was another Adam spitting game at his at his uh at his backbone, telling all kinds of things. Because you know what? Just like our law, it's not for everybody. His his law didn't pertain to to uh, to to, uh, to Adam and Eve, who were who the who were the uh, sons of the living God. He gave them power and authority over all of them. We're going to continue to delve into this. All right, 1 John 3 and 12. Okay, wait a minute, hold on. Knowing that the serpent of Satan gave Eve a lustful mind, do you think he has sex with Eve? Let's get 1 John 3 and 12. Now it's Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. He was of, of that what? Of that wicked one. And slew his brother. And wherefore slew him slew he him. Why he slew it? Slay, slay him. Okay. Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Okay. So Adam, the son of the most high God, was was not wicked. The most high is telling us that Cain was not Adam's son. The first so called white man. Let's let's get there. Genesis 4 and 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, 
and say, I have gotten a man from the Lord. The question remains, did Adam know Eve first, or was she already pregnant when she bare Cain? That's the question that that persists. Was Adam did 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 uh did Eve did it was Eve already pregnant? Okay. Continue on verse two, Genesis four and two. When she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Her second child, Abel, was Adam's. Abel was a shepherd. Cain was a tiller of the soil, harvesting from his seeds. Verse 3. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Okay, he brought of the fruit of the ground an offering to the Lord. Nothing spectacular about that. He brought of the fruit of the ground. He brought some, some that, he, that he had raised from the ground and offering to the Lord. They didn't say he picked the best fruit. He didn't, he didn't toil over the, the selection or any of that. He just bought an offering. You know, just gather some stuff and say, here, 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 here you go, Father. Verse, verse 4, Genesis 4 and 4. And Abel, he also brought up the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. What he did? He brought up what? He brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. Okay. So he brought the fat, fattest of his firstlings. Come on. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Because Abel mindfully selected the best of his herd, of his flocks. Mindfully selected those and, and brought it. Cain brought some stuff in without even thinking about it. I'm just grab this in. And Grab these few over here. I'm going to go put it in for, you know, get this offering to the Most High. What time I looked at that like, wow. Mm -hmm. Abel picked the best of the firstling to present to the Most High God, like a good son who shows honor to his father. Dominic, read Malachi 1 and 6. A son honors his father and a servant of his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? If I be a master, where is my fear? Said the Lord of hosts unto you. O priest, and despise my name. And you say, Wherein have we despised thy name? The most high looked at Cain's basket and knew that Cain could have done better. Genesis 4 and 5. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Cain's offering showed that he had no respect for the Most High, and it was rejected. It, it, it was just pitiful bunches of fruit and vegetables that he threw up in the basket and, 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 and brought before the Most High. A disrespectful type of, you know, th you know he, got, he got better fruit and vegetables than he could have put in the basket, but he just put some stuff in the basket and, here, here you go. I don't even know, I don't think I don't take it. You know, I don't want that. Looks like God just rejected it fully. All right. Genesis 4 and 6. Come on. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? The Lord asked, Why are you mad? Looking all crazy and stuff. Why are you mad? All right. Genesis 4 and 7. If thou doest well, Shalt thou be not shall that not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. If thou do well implies that Cain's offering was not pleasing, and it was not accepted. Who is the most high referring to when he tells Cain, if he does not do well, sin lies at the door, and unto you shall be his desire. Who is that his? Should be Satan's desire. If you don't do well, sin lies at the door and, and, and it should be Satan's desire. You should be his desire. Because we already know who, 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 you, who your father is. All right, 1 John 3 and 8. 
he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. The Most High was telling Cain that if he continued to do sin, then he is desired by the devil. Let's continue on Genesis 4 and 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass. When they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. I think Cain accepted being the seed of Satan, plotted and pri pri privately met Abel, his brother, killing him. He, he, he plotted this out. Plotted to kill his brother. Continue on Genesis 4 and 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? The Most High asked Cain concerning the whereabouts of Abel. The Most High knew where Abel was. He wanted to see if there was some truth in Cain. Cain, Cain was a liar from the beginning. This, this is us tell, showing, showing you that Cain was a liar, was a murderer, was a thief, was just a wicked, wicked soul in the beginning. Come on, Genesis 4 and 10. And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. We we have so much hatred among ourselves that when someone becomes su successful, he or she would have to move away from the same people that they broke bread with for years because a few of them would become so envious they would plot and kill him or her. I, I, I've listened to a, a lot of uh, uh, entertainers videos on uh, on this Vlad TV thing and I was listening one time to a, a, a rap artist called Lubusia or whatever and you know he said you know what I had to leave Louisiana you know because he said there's just too many haters you know the guys that that you know when you just had one song out they get that adapt you up but when you get successful he said don't, don't, don't your, your same friends that you you with all the time you like three of my friends was like you know I had to. He said I had to leave just because of that, because these guys would be trying to put hands on you, try to try to challenge you. So most of, most of these entertainers that 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 have gotten killed or gotten murdered, they got murdered in their own community. So if you ever got successful, you got to leave your community and leave those haters behind, because those those haters gonna be your friends, gonna be the ones that gonna come after you, try to kill you, because they're gonna be envious of you. Want to be you and can't take it. All right. Okay. Have we done John, First John three and fifteen? Yeah. Let's do what First John three fifteen. Dominic, read that. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and he know that the murderer. Hath, the murderer hath an eternal life of body in him. So hating your brother is enough to be a murderer. And you ain't got to kill you, kill your brother. Just hating your brother is a, is enough for the Most High God to say you are a murderer. You don't kill your brother in your in your mind and and, and all the things that you you hate about your brother. This is the punishment for Cain's killing Abel. Let, let's get the punishment for Cain killing Abel. Genesis 4, 11. And now art thou cursed from the earth. Y'all, he's what? And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Okay. To the ground did Cain's, uh, Abel's blood go, and the earth that the blood went into, the most High God cursed Cain from the earth. Cursed from the earth. What does this imply? Let's get Genesis 2 and 7. Dominic, read Genesis 2 and 7. Be, be clear on this, please. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The ground implies the earth. It's part of the earth, right? Mm -hmm. So the Most High God took that element of the earth and formed all of us. So in order to curse came from the earth, what does that imply? Now, we got these two, two things together. This is an equation here that you need to solve and understand for it. Most like God say, I curse you from the earth. 
Now I know that God formed man from the dust of the ground. So if the if the part of the earth that the Most High God formed uh, used was the dust of the ground, so what did how did He curse us from the earth? Curse him from the earth. He took away his color. Took his color away. He took the color of the earth from him. So instead of him being a a, a dark brown or a light brown or a, 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 a whatever complexion man he is, the Most High God. Took Cain's color from him. Cursed him from the earth. All mankind was a different shade of brown. From the dust of the ground. We have the color of the earth in us. When the Most High God cursed Cain from the earth. He took the color of the earth away from him. Cain was turned into the first so called white man. He was regenerated back upon the earth as Esau because Esau does not have the color of the earth in him either. Okay. Cain regenerated back as Esau. Let's prove that. Genesis 25 and 21. We're going to start there. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. Because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Rebekah was trying to conceive for almost 20 years. Because... Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebecca. And they had been trying to get, get pregnant for almost 20 years before she finally got pregnant. And she could not get pregnant. Isaac prayed to the Most High God to bless his wife, wife's womb, so she can conceive. And the Most High God blessed her womb. All right, verse 22. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Did they say children? Rebecca was like, if this is a blessing from you, why am I in so much pain? The children fighting cause, cause her to, a lot of pain. You got constant fighting in your womb, a woman having a constant fighting in her womb. That's going to be some pain. All the kicking and, and scratching and fighting and stuff, it's going to be some pain. All right, verse 23. And the Lord said unto her. Said to who? To who? Unto her. Now he was talking to, who Who was he talking to, Dominic? Rebecca. Okay, he said to her. He didn't say to Isaac, come on. Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other, the other people. And the elder shall serve the younger. The Lord told Rebecca only. This information was not told to Isaac, the father. And it is not written anywhere that Rebecca told Isaac what the Most High told her. The Most High told Rebecca that two different nations are in her womb. One shall be stronger and the oldest shall serve the younger. He didn't she didn't tell Isaac at all. I've read, you know, I've read this story constantly, and Rebecca never told Isaac what the Most High God told her. Because had she told Isaac. Isaac would have been wanting to give Jacob the inheritance from the beginning. Instead of Jacob having Jacob and Rebekah having to fool him, and Rebekah was so confident that she said, Look, if the most high God bless me, if the most high God curse me, let it let it fall on me. If Jacob, you know, because Jacob was like, What did my father find out? I'm a I'm a smooth man, and Esau is hairy. And she said, Let it fall on me. Because she believed in the Most High God to that point where she 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 took Jacob's side, but she didn't never tell her husband. So her husband to make the choice and let the Most High God work through, through, through that. Because you know what? You, if she would have told me that the Most High God told me, and my wife came and told me about one of my kids, and they both were twins, and the Most High God told me that big head ugly one right there, that's not the one he chooses. He chose that one right there. Okay, I'm a probably impartial. I'm, I, I, I'm think I'm gonna be biased. Yeah, I'm gonna be biased because if you love God, you're gonna choose the one that God chooses. So be behoove the wife and says, you know, I'm just shut up. And if, if God, if God is working with with uh, him, everything gonna go smoothly. Okay, Genesis twenty five and twenty four. 
and when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. All right, continue on. There were twins. We already knew that. Come on. And the first came out red all over. Like came out came out what? Red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. The first child that came out shall be cursed from the earth. It was cursed from the earth. They have no pigmentation. Red and hairy. Like all, all white babies come out, so-called white babies come out, they come out really red and they hairy. Okay, and they called his name Esau. Esau names denote absence of pigmentation. Okay. Genesis 4, 4 and 12. When thou tillest the ground. This is another curse of Esau. Come on. It shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive in the vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Now these two curses here, they still represent Esau who... It's, it still it represents Cain, but Esau is Cain regenerated back upon the earth. This is why Esau or Cain regener regenerated. It's using all types of chemicals, pesticides, GMOs to wait, raise food because the Most High has cursed his efforts through the pests in the fields. Because, you know, they plant anything. It's going to be a bunch of, bunch of worms and all kinds of stuff getting in, in it. So they have to use all kinds of chemicals and stuff to keep the worms out. Keep the pest at bay. They basically poisoned us the food. All right. Esau, or Cain rege regenerated, is a fugitive. He has never been brought to justice for all the mass murders that he has committed, all the robberies, theft of land, of property, the nation of Israel, possessions, in their museums, etc. These eyes were not given to them. They took them. Esau, or Cain regenerated, is a vagabond. He moves into other nations' land and claims it as his own. Let's let's get to this this prophecy of him being a vagabond that's in the Bible, as prophesied by his father Isaac, Genesis twenty-seven and thirty-eight. And Esau said unto his father. Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even my, me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. After Jacob had taken the blessings that Esau, that Esau, that Esau had given him at first, because Jacob asked Esau to sell him his birthright when he when he fed him that that, that pottage, and Esau agreed to it. Now, when Jacob schemed and you know, called uh, Isaac was bl almost, was blind; he couldn't see. So, when Jacob c came in and stole a blessing, Esau got upset and was crying. When 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 Jacob told him, when Isaac told him that I already blessed Esau, blessed Jacob, your brother. He he came in conniving and took him. I ain't got no more blessings. Now he's all bless me, Father. Please bless me. Even me, Father. So, verse 20, verse thirty nine. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and of the dew of heaven from above. Fatness of the earth. Now y'all look at these attributes where, where he told Esau that he's going to be dwelling. Fatness of the earth meaning what, Dominic? It's the best part of the land. It's pleasant land, and the dew of heaven mean what? It rains. It's rain. It's going to be best part of the land with plenty of rain. That is, is, It's a fruitful land. Who lived in those areas today? Esau. Well, you ain't got to say to Esau, but I'm just saying his father told him that your, your, your dwelling places will be the best parts of the earth with the dew of heaven. All the places that Esau lives in, it fits that criteria. All the, all the places that the white man lives in fit that criteria. He, you know, he got bases in other lands, but Everywhere that he called his home and he telling people to go home that been living on the, on the land forever. They the fattest part of the earth. Would do would rain fall and, and, and the crops stay green. Okay. So you gonna live in the best part of the earth. Come on, verse 40. 
and by thy sword shalt thou live. Oh, that's how you're going to get all of, all the good part of the earth. Come on. And shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Yeah, it's going to come to pass when Alexander the Greek, Greek come and all his cohorts. You're going to break his yoke from off you, and you're going to take all of, the, all of the best parts of the earth. In order to get this that land, Esau, the vagabond, would take it by killing and murdering, giving blankets with smallpox to the so-called Native Americans, killing them, preventing them from coming back and taking their land. Esau served Jacob until he got the power, and Jacob came down extremely low because of our sins. Let's get that Deuteronomy 28 and 43 because everything matches. You know, even though I'm talking about the beginning, but when you go into our law, which, which was written into uh, the first Adam, the breath of life, he, he knew about all of these laws. And the Most High God, when he when He made a covenant with us, most of the things he just regurgitated all the laws that he gave them because you know what? Cain and Abel were making sacrifices. When Abel, when Abel brought uh, uh, the, the first thing of his herd, and, and you know, and Cain was supposed to bring the best, the, the the best of his fruits and stuff. He didn't. He didn't do the sacrifice according to to uh what the Most High God wanted. All right, let's get Deuteronomy twenty eight forty three. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. One of the strangers, which is the heathens, another word for heathens, is Esau. He was once among us serving our nation. Because we violated the covenant with our God, he is now above us extremely high, and we have become extremely low. Verse 44, Deuteronomy 28 and 44. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. The so-called white man is lending to, to, to the Hebrews today. I do not see us lending anything to him that he does not capitalize on. For example, we lend our talents to be be performed in his arenas, which Esau owns. That's 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 the thing I see. You know, he don't we don't lend we don't lend nothing to him but talents that he capitalizes on as his own. He makes money off of us. That's all I see. All right, Genesis twenty seven and forty one. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. If this was a great blessing, why does Esau hate Jacob? Generations later, Esau kept his promise to kill Jacob. The most I chose Jacob as he chose Abel over Cain. So, this is a story playing out. You know, everything from the beginning is the same as it is today. And y'all just got to come to that understanding. But, you know, the fact is, the, the Most High God gives you that understanding once you fear his judgments. That, that is the beginning of your wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. The good understanding have all day that do his commandments. His praises endure it forever. So if you're not fearing the Most High God's judgments, you don't you don't really know this book. You you a surface you a surface Hebrew. You barely know what you know. You you barely know what some school is telling you, giving you their doctrine. All right, number five: the sons of God were the sons of of the Adam that God made in His image. All right. Genesis 6 and 1, we're going to start there. It came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. What? When men, which includes the other Adams, not of the generation of the one Adam created in the Most High God's image, these Adams had daughters. Oh, you know, because the Most High God made the image of God created he, him. He created one Adam in his image, male and female, he created he them. So those men, those Adams that he created, start having babies, 
by the by the male and females he created created he them. He created women and men, and they got pregnant and had children. Okay, let's see what happened. Verse two. That the man, that the sons of God. Read that again. Start over. That the sons of God tell the daughters of men. Okay, now somebody th came up thinking that the sons of God came out of heaven down to the earth and start having babies with these women. That is not true. Okay, start over again. Genesis 6 and 2. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. They took the wives of all which they choose. Just like today in today's society, we are Israel. Israel, for as a prince has thou power with God and with men and shall prevail. We are the prince that have power with the most high God. We are his, his sons. We are his children. We see the fairness of other nations. And we go into these women and stuff. We, we, we should not be going into them. Same thing with Adam's. When the sons of God went into these the, the, the men and women that the Most High God had created, so the the the, the ones Adam, their children down the generations start becoming wicked, going into the, the 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 other other women from the other Adams. The sons of God. Were these born through the generation of that one Adam? See Genesis fifth chapter, and you would understand the generation of Adams. That Adam, that one Adam. The other Adams had sons and daughters, and the Most High did not want his sons and daughters marrying them either. You can look at Deuteronomy chapter seven, verse three and four. He don't want us marrying or mixing ourselves with the other people, even during this time. The most high lowered the lifespan of men to 120 years. Genesis 6 and 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive, from, strive with men. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he is also flesh, that his day shall be, shall be 120 years. Because of the wickedness of the earth, the most high lowered the lifespan of man. Before this, many men were living close to a thousand years. One hundred twenty years was what the Most High lowered the lifespan of men, and He's lowered it even lower than one hundred twenty years now, because most men now live what eighty. The lifespan now, if if you live in right, probably eighty five years. You know, if if you're lucky. Verse four. There were giants of the earth in those days. Okay, slow down. Now, the sons of God, he made us Lord over all the creatures. So, our sperm was much stronger than theirs. So, when we went into other Adams, other daughters of the other Adams, we, pro we, we produced giants. All right? So, start over Genesis 6 and 4. There were giants of the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. These same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. So we were producing giants and, and, and mighty men mixing with these other atoms. Alright? The seed of the sons of God was, was greater. They created giants and great men of distinction, renowned men, when they went into the daughters of the sons of men. These were the gods that the Most High made Lord over all the earth. Let's get Psalms 82 and 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. All right, let's continue. 
Most High told us we were gods. We have always been gods. The, the children of Israel, his children, are always gods because we are his children. So when you mixing your seed with the other nations, you produce giants, a, a great renowned man. Genesis 6 and 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, you're going to see, this is why, this is the tree that he didn't want us taking, partaking in. Because of all of the wickedness that they, this creates, and, and the fact is that the other Adams and their generations start partaking in that tree. And forsaken in the Most High God. This was the tree that the serpent was tempting Eve, showing her the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And she partook and the weakness of the sons of man. Genesis 6 and 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. The Most High God re regretted that he had made all of mankind, including his sons, because they had defiled themselves with the sons of man. Why did the Most High God destroy the earth the first time? Let's let's get let's get a a, a short overview of what was going on before he destroyed it. His sons had mixed themselves with the daughters of men. Isn't that what the Israelites are doing today? Two, his son forsook his laws, statutes, and commandments, which were given only to his son Adam. Check, we are doing that too. And number three, wickedness of mankind was great upon the earth. Wickedness is everywhere, especially among the Israelites today. So, when the Most High God destroyed the earth the first time, all of the symptoms that are going on today was present. This is, you know, this earth is going to get destroyed again because fact is, all the things that he didn't want his son, the sons of Adam. The sons of the Most High God to uh, doing, he don't want he he don't want us doing either. So everything that he did, it was going on when he destroyed the earth the first time is present today. Let's continue on Genesis six and seven. And the Lord said, "I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air." For it repented me that I have made them. When the Most High decides to destroy mankind, it would not be announced or televised. He will catch you off guard again the same way he caught us before. And I'm not saying the same way he caught us before. You know what? I'm not going to say, I'm going to say with 100% surety that we were all present. We were all present because all of all of mankind that, that he destroyed, yeah, we come, we, we regenerated back upon this earth. If you're the wicked then, nine times ten, you're gonna be wicked again. All right. Matthew 24 and 37. Well, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Nobody knew the day or time it would occur. This is why only eight people were on such a large boat. You know, there could have been room for more people. There could have been extra room, but, but you know what? The most high God knew nobody was going to listen. Just imagine the world, that damn wicked, only eight people would listen. Eight people out of all the people on the earth during that time. Wow. See, that, that's something to imagine. All the people on the, on the earth, it could have been a million people on the earth back then. But only eight people. All right. Verse 38. Verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, that were eating and drinking. Do we read that again? For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Oh, they was life as usual. People are happy in their wickedness. 
just as we are today. You have fully accepted the tree of wickedness, just as the sons of God did during the time of Noah. We had fully accepted that tree, and we were not trying to bite the fruit from our tree, the, the, the tree of the Most High God, the things that he, the doctrine that he told us to do. Because these trees, that's all it is, is a doctrine. He told us to stay away from that, don't bite their fruit, because that's, that is sin. You, you'll be in transgression. So, no, no, it, it, it was pleasing to us. It, it was good to the eyes and made us feel good. All right, verse 39. And, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Just as the people in the days of old thought the world was never going to end, so do the people in this world today. Let's get 2 Peter 2 and 5. And spare not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. A, a preacher of what? A preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And this should be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he so ordered, as he so commanded us. So, he was preaching the commandments, but nobody wanted to hear him. They probably looked at Noah for a hundred years and thought he was a fool. What the hell are you building this big old boat out here in the middle of nowhere? There ain't no water nowhere nearby. And he would probably stand out there preaching every day. Noah was preaching the law and all passed by, made fun of him for building a huge boat, and there was no water nearby. Let's continue Genesis 6 and 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay. Noah born from the sons of God. He was one of the, one of the generations that was born from the sons of the Most High God. Did not disobey the laws of the Most High. Genesis 6 and 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man. He was a what man? A just man. Okay. And perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. How was Noah just? Dominic, read Romans 7 and 12. Wherefore the law is holy. The law is holy. Come on. And the commandment holy. Commandments are holy. And just. And good. So... He was just because he followed the laws and the commandments. None of these definitions change. See, the thing about it, if I go in the old covenant, go in the new covenant and explain something, it's because they never changed. The most High God said, you know, I, you know, I am the Lord, I change not. He don't change. So every if, if, if I go into Genesis and then go into uh, Romans or something, it's because the most High God laws don't change. So, Noah was a just man who obeyed the laws and the commandments. Because that's what makes him just. And he was perfect. He did no sin. Let's continue on Genesis 6 and 10. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Noah's three sons are the progenitors of every person upon this earth. Ham, Kim, Akham, are the progenitors of the ancient Egyptians. The laws of Ma'at of things they learned from their father Noah. Now, this right here crushes Egyptology down underfoot because the fact is their progenitor, which is Ham, a Kam, a Ham, or whatever they want to call it, he was a son of Noah. And Noah was righteous and just Meaning that he taught his children in his house. And they still live with Noah at, at, at 100 and 90, 100, some of them, uh, uh, Ham was 99 years old when the flood occurred and he was still living with his father. So his father had 99 years or 98 years to teach his son righteousness. And see, the laws of Mayotte come from his knowledge of righteousness from where, where he learned from his father. So yeah, they're going to sound like. Okay, Genesis 6 and 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. The earth was corrupt and violent, just as it is today. Come on, verse 12. 
And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for our flesh had corrupted his lay upon the earth. The Most High looked out and saw that his sons had corrupted themselves with the heathens. When the Most High had made the earth for their sake, they rejected the tree of life for the tree of lust, doing everything that felt good to them. Verse 13. Just like we like I said, everything that the Most High God told us to do, the, 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 the tree that he, he wanted us to stick to, the law statute, which, which, which is the doctrine, the law statutes and commandments that he told us to take partake in. Don't don't live the way that the other Adams are living. Don't live the way, don't do the things that the heathens are doing. Learn not the ways of the heathens and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathens are dismayed at them. Jeremiah 10 and 1. See, the fact is, the Most High God has always told us to keep ourselves separate, sanctified. That's what the separate and sanctified mean. Holy means that. You stay within your tree. You learn your laws. Do his commandments. Don't worry about their tree. Let their tree alone. Because that, that, that tree is not going to be sustained in the kingdom. It's not going to last because when Christ returns, there is not going to be one doctrine upon earth except his. Except the Most High God's doctrine. That's it. And if you don't know that doctrine at that day, I feel bad for you. All right. Genesis 6 and 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. The Most High told Noah that this world had run its course because everybody was being wicked and violent. We're not going to get that next time. Noah didn't know what day was going to happen, but he told Noah when to go in that ark. Go in that ark, shut the door and lock it, and don't open it. So he didn't tell him when it was going to start raining, but he told him, go on the ark and close the door. So you're not going to get bum rushed by people running when it start raining. No, because when it start raining, it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. It didn't rain during that time. It was just due every morning. After the flood, whither the ark rest? Let's get Genesis 8 and 1. You know, I'm not going to talk about the flood because everybody know about the flood. I'm going to talk about after the flood. All right, Genesis 8 and 1. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters of swag. This means that the Most High God ended the flood and rescued Noah and his sons and their wives. Can you imagine the pain from the loss of family? They must have felt. Because you know what? These women had family. They had mother and father. All of these women that Noah's sons were married to, these three women that Noah's sons were married to, they had fathers and mothers. They probably had uh, brothers and sisters, nephews and cousins, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Noah's sons... Noah, Noah had probably had brothers and sisters too. You know that that and, and they and you know they probably had nephews and nieces too. But this is this is the things that you're gonna face in this truth. These are the things you're gonna face because. It's a, it's a pain in righteousness, but doing right is doing what the Most High God telling you to do. Uh, yeah, I got brothers and sisters and nieces and cousins and stuff like that. Everybody do. But the fact is, I'd rather do what the Most High God say than to be, be straight up in, in line with them. You know, <clears throat> I would rather be on the boat with Noah than be in the, in, in the flood. That's where I. That's where that's that's my stance right right there. I'd rather be in the safety of the boat than to be out there out there in that water trying to get that door open and it ain't coming open. I'm sure there was some people at that door banging at that door. No, let us in. What that God said not to let y'all in. All right, Genesis eight and two. The fountains also of the deep 
And the windows of heaven were the, stopped. The windows of heaven? Read that again. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. And the frame from heaven was restrained. Okay. Now, the window of heaven, what your Christian pastor have you thinking that the Most High will throw blessings out of, but it only refers to rain. Hebrews were once farmers and shepherds, and we relied up upon abundant rain to water our crops, flocks, and herds. So, they deceiving y'all, making y'all believe that the window, that the Most High God would throw some blessings out the window of heaven, but it was during that time because we once upon a time were landowners. We owned land. We had we had we were shepherds and we were farmers. We fed our families by by owning land. So if you're a landowner, yeah, your your first thing is is, is having water. You're gonna need water to water your, your crop. They didn't have irrigation system, you know, sprinkler systems during that time. They, we had irrigation, but we didn't have sprinkler systems. Genesis eight and three. And the waters returned from off the earth continually, and after the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters were abated. It took hundred and fifty days for the water to decrease off the earth. All the land was underwater for 150 days. Genesis 8 and 4. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventh day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. The, the ark rested on Mount Ararat. Lately, it has been rumored to have been discovered. And I got a... Uh, I have a link to uh, an article saying that they discovered the the, uh, the ark. Number seven, before the, the Most High gave the dietary law to the sons of Jacob, let's 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 go at because I'm I'm gonna give you a procession, a succession. Well, I'm I'm gonna do I'm gonna enumerate. How the things, how, how the law was given, because it will explain to you why man eats so many different things. Because it's lawful for them to eat it. We might think it's not, but he didn't give the he didn't give the dietary law to everybody, and I'm going to prove that. All right, let's get let's get Genesis nine and two. We're going to start there. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. Now, the Most High God put that fear in all the animals to be afraid of us. All animals have a natural fear of mankind. However, animals have been forced to live in close proximity, creating dangerous encounters. The dietary law before the flood. Genesis 1 and 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to it. You shall be for me. Okay. So all people and animals were vegetarians. They ate fruit and vegetables. This was why we're in the Garden of Eden, before the flood. Now, the dietary law after the flood, Genesis 9 and 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat. Okay, come on. Even as the green herd have I given you all things. Including the fruits and vegetables. So, he, he brought up Genesis 1 and 29 when he says, Even as the green herb have I given you all things. This is the dietary law for all the nations after the flood. When the Most High chose the Israelites or the sons of Jacob as his inheritance, he gave them a different dietary law from the other nations. True, it is okay for other nations to eat anything, but not for Israelites. All right, let's get the dietary law for the Israelites only. I'm going to just give you a few of them because you know what? I didn't, I didn't include the fowl. All right, but we know that we don't supposed to eat no darn stork and no... Uh, no hawk, no eagle, 
you know, nobody be out there in the, you know, we don't have a problem with those animals most of the time. You know, nobody, nobody out there killing a the vulture or chewing on it. I ain't never seen nobody cook a vulture. You know. All right. Leviticus 11 and 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, these are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Okay, so we're talking about the beast of uh, beast that you should eat. Come on, speak only to the, speak now. Read that again. Speak unto the children of Israel. Now that's just, it, that's all inclusive. It, it, it's it's exclusive to the Israelites, not inclusive. It's exclusive only to the Israelites. So the Most High God did not tell. Moses to go out and speak to all the other nations. He's exclusively separating us and giving up, giving conversation only to the Israelites about the things that he's about to talk about. All right, come on. Saying, saying what? Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, saying, these are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Speak only to the Israelites and tell them. Notice the Most I did not. In Command Moses to speak to all nations. Verse 3. Whatsoever putteth the hook and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts that shall ye eat. The animals that you Israelites are allowed to eat must, one, must have a part in their hooves. Two, be cloven footed. And three, choose the cud. The animals that have all these characteristics, we can eat. Now, now some of them have partial characteristics like like a rabbit rabbit have a, a they chew the cud but they, they're not cloven footed or they, they don't part the hooves you can't eat that a camel you know you can't eat a camel or you can't eat you know you can't eat a pig because a pig don't chew the cud he parts the hoof and he's cloven footed but he does not chew the cud I didn't give you all the details in there, but the Most High God did give some examples of things that were similar, but but they they missed one of the three. All three must be present. Okay, now Le Leviticus eleven verse nine: These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. These are the things. That we Israelites, not all people, can eat in the waters. It must have fins and scales. Now, all other nations, the Most High God did not tell Moses to speak to all the other nations, so it's only exclusive to the Israelites. You Israelites have got high blood pressure, uh, uh, cholesterol issues, and all that other stuff. It's because you're eating the wrong foods. You cannot eat that food. The Most High God told, told Moses to speak to you. Tell them they can't eat this. Y'all out there eating catfish and shrimp, crab, and lobster? That's not the kind of food that the Most High God told us to eat. And every time we eat that, he punishes, punishes us for that. And the Most High God says it's abomination to eat it. So that means that it's disgusting. You eat you boo-boo most of the time because... All the animals he's telling you uh, not to eat are the animals that eat that kind of stuff. You just a a a, 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 cra a, a you a doo doo eater because you eating pig. They, they eat doo doo and everything. <coughs> clean, you know they clean. You you you, you they, you're a scavenger eater. You call you all what you eat. If you eat pigs, they eat anything. They eat their own babies. Crab, lobsters, and stuff. They you they eat well well turds and all kind of mess. Y'all just love lobster. They down that clean ocean. That's why they get so darn big. People love that stuff. Okay. Let's continue. Genesis 9 and 4. But flesh with the life thereof which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Now, even then, even the covenant back then, the Most High God told us not to not to partake in the blood, eating blood or drinking blood, 
like some of these you know, people, you know, call like uh, there's African nation. I think the uh, what what you call those those tall people that live out there in the desert and be drinking that blood with milk and stuff. Uh, I've got the name of these type of people. You know, Esau love bloody stuff. You know, they love they steak just still bleeding. Just sizzle it a couple of times and turn it over and then put it on the plate. Things still bloody in the middle. Most like God told us not to eat blood. And, and, and he even put that in the commandments. In the commandments, he, he put it in the commandments. He don't want you eating blood to, rem to remind you don't eat any kind of blood. And he's saying this in Genesis, and he still brought it into the, our law. Don't eat. And that, this is for all nations. All nations are not supposed to, to, to eat the blood of an animal. All right. Even the other nations are not supposed to eat blood of the animal. Verse 5. And surely your blood of your lives will, will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. The Most High will require your life for your eating the blood of any animal or any man. Verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Killing is not allowed even among the nations. So, that law... The Most High God passed to all the nations. Verse 7. And you, be ye fruitful, and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. The Most High told us all to be fruitful and multiply. Now these laws in, in, in Genesis 9 refers to every man. At this time, until when the Most High God chose Israel, he separated them and gave them a new dietary law. At this time, he told all mankind to, to eat anything they want to eat. Now, when he broke Israelites off, does that law still apply to the rest of the mankind? No. Wait. Yes. If, if, when he broke the Israelites off, if the law still applies to them. They can eat anything. Most like God told, he told them right here. Anything, y'all can eat anything that crawls and creeping upon the earth, but you just can't drink, eat the blood. Now, we can't do it, but they can eat. You know, a Chinese man, a Japanese man, if they, if they want to eat uh, octopus and stuff like that, they can feel free to, to eat it, but we can't eat it. They're not in sin because the fact is, most High God gave that to them. He just want us to be holy and separate from them. He don't want us to be acting or eating like they eat. Okay, last page. I didn't know I was there that quick. Genesis 9 and 8. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, Okay, what did he say? And I, behold, I established my covenant with you and with your seed after you. Now, this is for everybody. Because Noah's sons represent everybody upon the earth. All nations. It has nothing. This, you know, this is included. Israelites are included as well. So this does not change with the covenant that the Most High God made with us because this is a law outside of the covenant. All right. The Most High established a covenant with Noah and his sons and all the generations afterwards. So that represents everybody on the earth. Genesis 9 and 10. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. So this included the beast. This is the covenant also with all the animals. Come on. Verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. All flesh should not be destroyed by a flood. This is a covenant. He's not going to destroy any flesh again by a flood, by a, a, a great flood that destroys everything. All right, verse 12. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. 
This is an everlasting covenant with all nations. Perpetual. Perpetual generation goes on and on and on. It never stops. Verse 13. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be as for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. The rainbow does not represent the LGBTQ organization. It is It represents the covenant that the Most High God made with all mankind and all flesh that breathes air upon this earth. Because this covenant had nothing to do with the fishes. The fish did not suffer through the flood. They probably ate. They probably ate, and they probably still talk about the flood in the fish world. Man, you remember that flood? Boy, we had all kinds of food. We, we, we were stuffing ourselves every day. You know, Genesis 9 and 14. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. This is why the rainbow is seen upon the earth. This is the covenant that the Most High God made with all of mankind. Now, uh, I'm going to stop here because Genesis is, is much more than one, one day of, of study because there's a lot of, a lot of things in Genesis that did occur and it's the beginning for, for, for the Israelites as well. But we first start at the sons of God. Why the Most High God destroyed the earth the first time? Simple. Same way he's going to destroy the earth the second time. Because his sons defiled themselves with the other men's daughters and sons. Which he don't want us making marriages with them today. He brought that in. He got that in this law. And that is very important. One of the important reasons why. He destroyed the earth the first time because we were wicked. We were doing all the unimaginable evils upon the earth like we're doing today. All of the elements that were present the first time when the Most High God destroyed the earth are present right now today. So there's a simmering pot being simmering right now. After a while, the Most High is just going to turn the heat up and he's going to destroy this place. Everything is present when he destroyed the earth the first time. Present to the same thing is present today. And, you know, I, I will tell you, I've heard it all because when I first came into the truth and somebody explained the sons of God and, you know, all this stuff, to my, to my, to my, the sons of God came out of heaven with, with the angels and stuff like that, didn't make any damn sense. I, I, I really believe they were confused about, about the word uh, of their, their leaders and their teachers. I'm going to tell you, the, the fact is, the Most High God gives you everything that you need in order to get his word. Psalm 111 and 10 tells you the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praises endure forever. And the fact is, through your doctrine, I see no fear. Because your doctrine is just, just weak. When, you, when people come up with these kinds of uh, precepts and concepts, uh, the angels came from heaven and they store. And, you know, there's a doctrine on the earth where you know, all these angels and stuff were, you know, were, you know, stuck in a rock and all this for 10,000 years. Genesis 1 through 9 does not talk about that. Because why does the Most High God, he made the earth for man, for, for Adam. For, for Adam's sake. He made Lord of all, all the creatures, including the other Adams. From him come we all because all the other Adams died and, and, and only from the son of Adam was Noah. Came out of the, out of the generation of Adam. So the fact is, Adam was the son of God. That, you know, that's the thing about it is the, the 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 doctrine of the disciples didn't didn't their doctrine did not last. That's why the falling away did occur because the doctrine of the disciples that were taught by Christ did not last. Now you're having to 
keep the most high God's commandments and, and, and walk in his ways and, and, and the spirit comes in you and teaches you those things again. Everybody calling themselves a leader, really not a leader. I, I'm telling you, I, I've had some guy on my page talking about he's, he is the Messiah. I, I, you know, in my anger, I would have said something stupid to him. But you know what I did? I just deleted him off my page and banned him from my page. Because fact is, me, I know how Christ is coming. From the other end of heaven, he coming with power. And glory with his weapons. Negro, you ain't got a weapon to destroy anybody. When Christ come, he changes, he going he's the he gonna take dominion of all people, all nations, and all language languages, and you come in talking about you the you the Messiah. I'ma tell you. We got people that stupid, and he talking to me. Like I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But anyway. Hope y'all got something out of this lesson. Uh, the topic again is understanding Genesis, the beginning, part one. I'll have part two coming shortly. Uh, I'd like to again give a shout out to my 28,100 plus Facebook followers and also my YouTube subscribers. I don't do much on YouTube, but I upload my lessons every week and uh, I still get people visiting, so I'm all praises to those visitors, and I give I thank you again for visiting. My Facebook page is the at sign, live, L-I-V-E, Shabbat, S-H-A-B-B-A-T, class, C-L-A-S-S, -S, all one word. My Facebook page is live, L-I-V-E, Shabbat, S-H-A-B-B-A-T, class, C-L-A-S-S, -S, all one word there. Now, I've had some, had some uh, so-called Islamic people Hebrews, though, Islamic Hebrews, like my page, and you know the, the uh, algorithm for Facebook, if you like my page, they're going to send you anything that the Sabbath class uploads. And then all of a sudden you want to, you know, send me a message to my, remove me from here. Hey, I didn't put you on there in the first place. That You blame that on Facebook. If you, But anyway, if you want to remove yourself from my page, just go into one of my messages and say, you know, uh, remove notifications or something like that. It's, it's, it's a thing that you can, uh, you know, just remove the notification. You don't need to be notified when when I, uh, I upload something or uh, whatever. Now, if you want to follow my page, for those who want to follow my page, just go on, on my uh, at live Shabbat class. There is a uh, button at top that says follow and the button, at, uh, and the button to the right of it that says like. Follow it and like and you will receive all my lessons, and you'll be able to access my uh, previous lessons. You know, but if you're not on my people, I, you know, you ain't got to worry about liking or following it because you know what? It, it's not for you. You know, all praise if you want to like it and you want to follow it, but you know what? You still are a guest in my house. Now, you be respectful. I ain't got nothing, you know, all praises. You be respectful, you know, that you stay there as long as you want, listen to what you want, and you know what I'm saying? But I don't need your input. Don't need your input. You're a guest in my house, and you know what? You're not permitted to speak on topics that doesn't concern you. That's you know, if you want to speak on topics that doesn't concern you, go to another page. Go, go to another page on somebody else's page. Don't do not do it here. Because I would ban you for, for life on my page. You know. But anyway, hope you guys got some out of this. And family and friends, with that, I say shalom. Shalom.